live from my mother's basement, we're going to be doing something entirely different here. This is my mom's Robert's 1725 tape recorder player, reel to reel, uh, that she got when she was a kid. And while I'm here, up here in New England, I thought it'd be kind of cool to see that in, in my spare time, if I could very quickly, without having the benefit of any of my tools, right, just whatever mom's got laying around, be able to, to shotgun replace any capacitors in here, uh, do whatever maintenance needs to be done on this tape recorder, and, and bring it back up for her. I'll, I'll use my regular supplier of capacitors and just do the repair, but just obviously not going to be able to, to do the stuff I do at home. But, but she is excited to see if we could get this running. So we're going to get started. This is a, a stereo four track reel to reel. I remember this as a kid growing up. Uh, she had this and there are other outputs available uh, to this and you could uh, turn on and off external speakers. It's a very nice unit, you know, back back in the day. Uh, we could see that there are covers here probably to gain access to the tubes. Though so we're going to have to open it up further. We'll get these off first to see what we got behind here. I'll be using only the most precision screwdrivers for this task. See what we got. So we have, there's a fan back here, probably that's the motor with a fan connected to it. We can see a uh, speaker there, speaker there. Mostly mechanics is what we're seeing, right? I see a, a belt back there. Belts always concern me, but that's not really what we're after. It's a two microfarad capacitor over here. I'll uh, have to see what the rating is for that. Have a look. So far, so good. Yeah, this is where all the magic is. But I got a feeling it's all under here on the bottom. Yeah, we're going to have to take this whole thing apart. But so far, I see one, two, three, four, five, five tubes. Five tubes and everything's on the bottom. Maybe, just maybe, it opens from the bottom too. I'll get lucky. Power transformer. This looks like a audio... Audio output transformer right there. It's accessible from the bottom, as we can see here, but it's got these funky keyed screws. So I'm gonna have to find a way to get these open. How old were you when you got it? I was 13. Oh wow, okay. So security screws are coming out. I just give them a little tap and I just uh, twist them out with pliers. So cool, we'll get under here and we'll see what capacitors we need to pull and replace. So finally got that off, let's take a look. Oh, that's not too bad at all, look at that. We'll get in there. Take a uh, take stock of the capacitors, and there's a couple of big ones in here, but big back then, right? I don't have to worry about getting shocked. This thing has been on in years. A uh, 40 by uh, 350, 40 by 300 is a, another little one back there. Cool. Yeah, let's we'll we'll write a list. We'll we'll throw out an order. We'll clean up some stuff in here. It does reveal itself though. We could see that that if I get these screws out from the back here, and there's some more. Up top here by Mason's Legos and, and and the bottom ones that we may be able to just slide this out from the chassis, giving us a lot more room to work. I'm not going to be having the same tools that I used to do this job, so that would probably be for the best. Just slide it straight forward and out of this chassis is what we're going to go for. Okay, all of those screws have been removed uh, from here as well as from the bottom. And we're going to try and bring this forward real gentle like. Well, there are two more screws on the top, so I got to get those as well. Indeed. Mom informs me that these screws are also holding them in. Good job. Thank you. That's why we keep you around. I know. Jesus Christ, that better be all of them. Okay, so, so here's how it goes. This plate has to come off because there are screws under it, right? And in order to get that plate off, I have to take off uh, some of these things right here, so... We're just going to do that. Don't want to damage anything. Being very careful. So I'm going to do that now. Is there anything left to take off on this thing? Oh. Nope. Oh. What did I do? Oops. Two washers came out. Yeah, I got them. Definitely not at my workbench. But okay, we're good. Oh, those are just the, uh, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. Nice. Look at that, huh? And now we'll be now we'll be able to remove from there's the, the bolts for the chassis. See that? One. And then there's probably a two down there. And then there's a a three. And then there's a four. Good. 
Unscrewing those four screws releases this forward like this, and this piece will come out separately. Now this unit is completely separated from the tape player. Uh, there's a couple of wired connections that I recorded, and a power plug, believe it or not, standard uh, two-prong that connects into it. Now we're working with not so much, you know? Now we got, like, you know, not a whole lot to deal with. Now it's just, like, basically, basically we're just dealing with a small amplifier and a couple speakers. You can see the tubes are, are NEC, Japanese, right? With that, we have separated the unit from the uh, wooden box. A little, little, little difficult. The, these, these clips sort of dug into the wood a little bit up top and provided some resistance. But now, now it's completely separated. Now we could get under it. We blow this out with some air, get it nice and clean. We'll clean the tubes. Um, I, I think this shaft is the only thing that needs to be oiled here. This, this is mechanical and, you know, clean the switches. I've got some potentiometers here. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe get a little, see if we get some deoxidant or radio shock or something. Maybe worthwhile to get that. To leave it with my brother or something who finds some use for it. And for the tube sockets too as well. Uh, everything else is in good condition. Take a look at the speakers. You know, speakers are, are, are pristine. There's nothing wrong with them. So this is what I got. This is a, a 40, 40 by 350, 40 by 350. 40 by 300 and this suspiciously looking cathode bias thing looks like uh, 50 by 25 that's all I found as uh, far as electrolytics down here so that is good enough to start off a uh, an order right I see other capacitors but they're not electrolytic and I don't have ESR meter and stuff like that and I'm not gonna do a shotgun of every single cap in here it was just those. This is QD contact cleaner, and this is the uh, lubricant for the mechanical portions. We're gonna start with the contact cleaner right now. Try and get all this stuff done before the capacitors arrive, obviously. And I'm gonna be doing the potentiometers. There's a, a multi-switch over here that connects to a lever on the other side. We've got all these jacks and ports. And this switch had a, it had a heavy feeling to it as compared to this one. Got a, got a lot lighter when I sprayed it in, so we'll see what happens. Also, this inner one, very heavy. Very heavy as compared to this now. Whatever grime was in there definitely got worked out. So I'm going to turn these a while. This is definitely not deoxys, so I'm going to turn them a while, loosen whatever's up, and I'm going to irrigate it again. I'm going to make sure I, I dry up whatever accumulates inside this chassis. I didn't have any moths, but I was able to find some of my mother's silver polish here. And that worked just fine to polish up the end of this terminal. I'm trying to bring it into focus. That worked absolutely perfect. There's an old one over onto the left behind the wires that hasn't been polished for comparison purposes. As you can see a nice shine to it. So that'll do the job for cleaning up those terminals. See two more terminals right here that need attention. I polished those two connectors. That came out just fine. I only polished the area that's actually going to touch the jack and not worry about the entire connector. So we could see a nice reflection there. Found one more jack that I cleaned down here. This one was a stereo one. I actually did it um, bringing the Q-tip through the front of the jack to clean this one out. The layer multifunction switch is going to be interesting. You can see me turning it from the bottom. And I'm just going to have to spray it and, and keep turning it. Get all these sections and clean them out. I've gotten everything. I'm going to flip it back over and work on the tube sockets. I'm just going to pull out one at a time. Clean the tube. Uh, clean the socket. And put them back in. I don't want to break them. As predicted, they uh, clean up very nicely. They're tiny little things, 6BM8. 67 maybe a date code, I don't know. All the tubes removed from the chassis. The chassis is now dust free. Not showroom shine, but, but all the dust is removed now. So it's bearable to work in. And I'm going to clean the tubes, like I said, and put them in the respective sockets. Here's our next contestant. I think this one's a rectifier. Looks like a rectifier. Clean this one up now. They do not make these easy to remove from the metal case. There's a little flange you have to bend up on the bottom and then push it out uh, from the bottom. But I got it out. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean out the socket. Same procedure. Put them back in these metal cases. So all the lower chassis is now really waiting for are the capacitors. And that's it. This is all ready to go. I may just uh, put a little bit of lube on this shaft and that's it. The top end does have one 
two microfarad capacitor that will need replacement. This one looks like it does have a day code of 66, by the way. That's another one. Uh, the tube, I think, was 67. This one says 66, so getting awfully close to a date. The troll's back on to take a look at the mechanics. Every single joint and area that moves has been lubricated. Works really nice now. Nothing to complain about. In this little thing up here. Now working good. So everything, everything up front here. I know there's a couple pieces in the back I still need to address. And I think there's a, a linkage behind here I need to reposition for that. As well as cleaning the heads, which I'm gonna do with alcohol. And I think a bearing in here that I need to do, but most of it I was able to get done uh, with relative ease, so very nice. I've called in my specialist, Sadie, to help me review the quality control of this iPod repair. What is that? Light? What, is it a light? I don't know. What do you think it is? Light. Huh? Light. Is it a light? Is it a light bulb? Should I take one out? Yes. Here, take it. You have any idea? No? Electricity? It's electricity? Mm, could be electricity. What year is on there? 67. That's a long time ago. Nana's iPod was big, huh? Yep. Yep, Nana had a big iPod. What do you think, Mason? Huh? What do you think, Mason? What is this? Come here. I know this. Can you take a look where it came out of? Came out of here. Came out of there, no doubt. What is it? I just forgot the name. Is it a vacuum tube? Yes. Oh. That's what it is. Oh. It's a vacuum tube and it goes there. The vacuum tube and it goes there. Let's put it back in then. Huh? And there we and go. It looks like that. And then we're done. So the vacuum, so, so the vacuum tube stays. The so vacuum tube stays because this is a Nana's portable iPod, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the portable the one. The candy lamb. You don't want to see the stationary one. No. Just arrived in the mail is Nana's uh, blank MP3 from the 70s, right? Mm hmm And we are going to do an unboxing, right? Yeah. And we can see that this has never been recorded on, right? And what do we got here? What do we expect to find in this package? A MP3. An MP3 from the 70s, huh? Mm hmm Yeah, let's do it. So uh, you could take the uh, cellophane off. Rip that up. You want me to start a few with a razor blade? Just keep it keep it in, in the frame down here. Go ahead. Turn it over. Carefully raise the cover of the box. Give it a little shake. Open it up. Oh, look at that. That's old school, huh? And that's it. That's what we're going to use when we do our recording. Put all our songs on there. Cool, huh? Mm-hmm. We're going to be doing a little bit of detailing here to the face of the unit. I can't simply wash it in the sink because there is a foam rubber on the back, right? And the foam is still in very good condition. I don't want to damage it. So I'm going to use some Windex and spray it and clean it. And that's what I'm going to do very gently. Okay, this is all cleaned up. I'm going to put this back off to the side so it doesn't get damaged. The outer case is not only going to be cleaned, it's also going to be treated. Possibly, I'm going to try Armor Roll and see if that brings out a shine to it and remove this paint. After a couple of sessions cleaning it with the, uh, with the spray cleaner, I actually sprayed with some WD-40. It actually pulls the dirt up out of the, the grain and then I wipe it off. That happens a couple of times till it stops pulling it up. And then I spray some WD-40, a thin coat let it soak and then wipe it I get that just a little bit of brown and I just kind of repeat this just thin coats and eventually it pulls all the dirt up from the grain and this is what I'm left with it looked very nice definitely pulled the years away from it you agree Mason yeah yeah so we're gonna do that for the rest of the sides this was the worst by far we're gonna call this piece finished and move on to the next step all the capacitors have arrived from my distributor we can now begin with the capacitor portion of this project and I'll admit that my mother does not have a soldering iron uh, 
as one would expect. I was able to get a, a loaner for my brother. This is not the equipment that obviously I'm used to using, but this will get by for this project. I have the first cap replaced. This was the first 40, and I have removed this uh, dual 40 microfarad capacitor right here, and I've clipped it at the lead, so everything is still preserved here. I've pulled back the negative from that one and clipped it here at this star ground. I'm going to put in the 240s to replace that one now. This sort of an interim connections uh, halfway point. We can see all the, all the grounds are tied together. I added just a little bit of lead to, to make it rigid while I worked on it. This is just fine. This is a star ground all going here. I got them uh, cable tied nicely. And this is the part that needs work. I'm still using the original junctions. And I'm going to clean this up nice now. And then straighten out everything just how I like it. Here it is now the second iteration cleaned up. I'm going to get some padding under those capacitors so they don't wiggle. It'll be more secure. A couple of sticky cushions added under the capacitor. There is no more flex. You'd have to rip it up, right, in order to get it to move. So it's nice and solid. It is not floating by any means. Uh, it looks good. I mean, I'm happy with it. Now I just obviously need to uh, insulate these areas, of course. But as far as placement goes, uh, everything looks really nice. And then I'll move on to this one. And right here, that's the fourth 40. So that concludes the 40. I think I got just a couple more to do, and that'll be it for this side. And there we go. That's the last 40 in place. I have another capacitor doing here, and that is that uh, 50 down there. And then I have one more on the other side. I think that's about it. Last cap in. We're going to move this unit out of the way. It will replace the single cap on the top unit now. Here is the capacitor on the top side that I'll be replacing now. I admit it would have looked nicer with shrink wrap, but Super AD will suffice. We can see the difference in size between the two capacitors here. This is the old one, and there's the new one. I'm going to uh, support this as well, and then it'll be finished. Slowly sliding the unit back in, you can see that it, it stops on the retainer tabs for the screws, and then I just push them in, and it slides a little bit further. No problems at all. With that, it is now all the way back down in position. I'll put in all the associated screws to get us this far, so I can start on the top phase. good time to give the heads a proper cleaning I got some isopropyl alcohol on here just wick off the excess and just just cleaning them up that's all nothing major getting any any dirt off a little bit of brown is coming up I have, uh, automatic set to off I've got it set to stereo tape speed set to high and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to fire this up for its inaugural uh, smoke test. And it is running. Take a look at the tubes in the back. See everything is glowing very nicely. Fan spinning. As it's a new turn up and I don't have a Variac, I am going to just let it sit here for uh, a few minutes and monitor it. Let it find itself. And, uh, you know, only the electrolytic capacitors were replaced. So I want to let the other components just sort of just sort of warm up and acclimate. It's worth noting that this uh, two microfarad capacitor is not electrolytic, and it is not polarized. When I put the electrolytic capacitor in, it exploded. I have reverted back to this one. I will resume testing now. And it works a lot better when it is not exploding in my face, as demonstrated. Everything had arrived from eBay except the end cap guy managed to not show up on time, but these two guys did. Uh, so I'll be able to uh, start doing some testing here, though it's going to have to lay on its side. So I, I put a, um, a cap under here so that the, the cables wouldn't be impinged. Uh, I have it on record right now with the uh, stop or cue uh, pushed up, and I have some royalty-free music on my other iPhone that I'm going to inject in here for some testing.
So mom and I have been fiddling with this for a little while, right? Just using the beginning of the tape for experimental purposes. Come to discover a couple of things. Number one, right? This specific Roberts player is not designed to work laying on its side. We found that out. Uh, it doesn't stay aligned. It, it doesn't spool into here. It's, it's unstable, right? So what I've done is I've used one of the old uh, caps. This is dried out rubber, but it'll still serve our purposes. And then we use the uh, uh, cork from a wine bottle, right? It's, it's not ideal, but it'll get us through testing. And what I did really quickly was uh, balance the inputs and then record some uh, royalty-free music from YouTube uh, for the purpose of testing. And I'm changing the volume and stuff in the background. It's, that's me actually messing around with this to get the meters to balance. Came out nice, huh? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll push it back on. I mean, yeah. this is not ideal. It's only supposed to get us through today. Interesting that the meters don't work on, on play, but they work on record. I don't know what's up with that, but that's what it is. It works fine on record. Once I got them bouncing in the right position, I kind of left it alone until, until it ended abruptly. But, yeah. So what I would like to do with this tape now is I'm, I'm basically just going to throw it into play. This tape has been in the box for quite a while. I want to retension it, and and I know that if you got time in your hands, the best way to retension these tapes, right, is, is really just a just hit play. And let it, there's a little more in there apparently. Is to just hit play and let the tape just run through. Okay, that's where it ended. Uh, the best thing to do is just to hit play and let the whole tape uh, tension through all the way to the other side, and then I'll rewind it, and then this tape will be. Uh, good to go for recording. So that's what I'm going to do now. You see the tape retention very nicely using this method. It took a while, but it looks really good. And I'm going to just rewind it back onto the spool. I started just a little bit, just get a little lead. And now I'm going to continue. I admit this is not the best setup, but it'll do until the parts arrive. You ready, Sadie? I'm, I'm going to show you one time. You ready? You watching? Mm -hmm. No tricks here, right? Here we go. You watching? Make sure the volume's good. This is a special recording that we are making in restoration of Nana's 1960s iPod, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, we got this tape and we're recording now so we can put it on that tape so everybody can see how funny our voice sounded like like today what's today's date today is june 16th 2018 right so this is what i sound like i'm, I'm uncle o and i'm already old and crusty so my voice doesn't change and you are sadie rubin sadie rubin how old are you sadie six you're six and you are mason rubin mason rubin so we're gonna yeah, add, I'm 11. and you're 11 <laughs> Wow, so you're, you're already old. Wow. That's not... So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to Nana's tape. So every time she starts the tape at the beginning, she can listen to this, right? Yeah. And this is like the, the, the cool kids club. Beginning of the tape. So enjoy your music, Nana. You like that, Mom? Yes, it's great. You have music on? Dada. Oh, yeah. Dada. What'd you put on there? Well, Daddy. Well, the 60s and 70s really good music. Dada. The music is still good. Okay, go. I hope you enjoyed the restoration of Nana's iPod. Thanks for watching.